Jerry the geologist is teaching a class, so I'm going to take up where he left off. The right amount of heat can turn a solid rock or metal into a liquid. Pressure from the weight of the earth and movement of materials inside the earth can crush rocks, and over time the effects of heat and pressure create the rock formations and other geologic phenomena that we find in the world. Working together, heat, pressure, and time create the three types of rocks that exist in the world. Every rock in the world can be placed into one of three categories. The three types of rocks are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Try saying each of these rock types out loud. Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. The first rock type, igneous, is the most common. Igneous rocks come in many forms. Some form entire mountains and some appear as boulders jutting from the earth. This picture shows a close-up of one type of igneous rock. This plain old gray rock contains different types of minerals and it hasn't always been a plain old gray rock. The word igneous comes from the Latin word for fire because igneous rocks begin deep down in the heat of the Earth's mantle. As you have heard, the Earth's mantle is full of a hot, gooey, oozing substance known as magma, or melted rock. The magma is constantly being forced through the surface by pressure from within the Earth. As it travels upward from the mantle through the crust, the magma begins to cool and harden. Sometimes the magma will erupt from a volcano, but sometimes the conditions aren't quite right for an eruption. This formation is called Half Dome, and it's located in Yosemite National Park in California. When you look at Half Dome, you are looking at an old magma chamber. A magma chamber is a pocket or place in the Earth's crust where magma collects. As more magma enters the chamber, it gets hotter and pressure builds, and the magma can force its way up to the surface in the form of a volcano. Or sometimes, as in the case of Half Dome, the magma just gathers in the chamber and stays there without erupting. For whatever geologic reason, the heat and pressure did not get great enough to force the magma through the crust and onto the surface in the form of lava. Instead, the magma cooled and hardened within the chamber. And over time, the rocks and soil around the chamber eroded away, leaving beautiful Half Dome alone, sticking high up above the earth. Half Dome is certainly a big igneous rock. Another type of igneous formation occurs when magma intrudes or pushes itself between two existing layers of rock. This means that not all the layers in this mountain were formed one on top of the other. Rather, some of the layers forced their way in between other rocks. This is my favorite type of igneous rock, obsidian, better known as volcanic glass. Volcanic glass forms when certain types of lava cool and harden, becoming smooth, shiny, and glass-like. Only certain types of lava under certain conditions can become volcanic glass. Some Native Americans used volcanic glass to make arrowheads and spearheads. If you break a piece of volcanic glass, you will find that it is incredibly sharp and strong. Every now and then I find ancient artifacts, just like this when I'm out rock hunting.
After igneous, the second major rock type is sedimentary. Sedimentary rocks are not formed like igneous rocks, which form from cooled magma. In fact, heat does not play much of a role at all in the formation of sedimentary rocks. Instead, pressure and time are the most important factors in the formation of sedimentary rocks. The word sediments refers to tiny little particles such as dirt or rock, which are carried along in water, ice, wind, or landslides. If you dump a spoonful of sand into a glass of water, for instance, you'll see the sand gradually sink down and settle on the bottom of the glass, much in the same way that sediments settle on the bottom of lakes and oceans. Sediments are always floating around in lakes, oceans, and rivers, and over time, sediments in lake water settle and form a thick sludge on the bottom of a lake. As more and more sediments settle on the bottom, more and more weight presses down on the sludge. Over time, the pressure from the weight of the upper sediments can cause the sludge to harden into rock. Through time and pressure, layers of sediments are turned into sedimentary rock. Coal is a type of sedimentary rock that comes from decayed plants that have been under pressure for many years. Coal is an important energy source. People burn coal in order to create electricity for homes and to make energy to power machines in factories. People get coal and other important rocks, minerals, and metal by mining them from the earth. One way to mine coal is by digging a mine shaft or a tunnel deep down into the earth. Another sedimentary rock is called iron ore. Ore is a rock that contains valuable minerals or metals. There are many different types of ore in the world, but iron ore is one of the most important. Iron ore is the source of iron, a strong metal, which is used to make steel. Steel, in turn, is used to build bridges, cars, buildings, tools, and other things you see and use every day. Sandstone is one common type of sedimentary rock. And wherever you find sandstone, there's a good chance that you're walking in a place that used to be completely underwater. At one time or another, every place on Earth has been completely submerged in water. Thus, sandstone is quite common throughout the world. This photo was taken in Bryce Canyon in the state of Utah, which is known for its unique sandstone formations. Here's another sandstone canyon I thought you'd like to see. Antelope Canyon in Arizona is a very special place. It is known as a slot canyon, which is formed over many, many years as water from rain and floods rushes through the sandstone, causing it to erode. These cliffs are made of limestone, another type of sedimentary rock. Limestone is interesting because it's composed mainly of minerals left over from ancient sea creatures like clams, oysters, and other shellfish. When these creatures died, their shells sank down to the ocean floor and settled with the other sediments. Over time, the churning oceans ground the shells into a fine white powder. The powder settled and more shells and sediments put pressure on it. it took many, many years, but eventually all the powdery shell leftovers were compressed into limestone. If limestone is subjected to intense pressure for an even longer period of time, it can turn into 
another kind of rock called marble. Marble is very hard, and it often has a beautiful pure white color. People have used marble for thousands of years to make fine buildings and sculptures. Marble is known as a metamorphic rock, which is the third and least common type of rock. Metamorphic comes from the Greek word for transformation or change. Metamorphic rocks are formed when other types of rocks undergo intense heat and pressure and change or metamorphose into new kinds of rocks. Well, congratulations. You are becoming a geologist. Now you know about the three rock types, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Won't everyone be impressed when you tell them about the new words you learned? <laughs>